listen to him. I like him a lot. Okay. <laughs> All right, just okay, here we are me. live. Uh, Al, and so I am Liz Trotter. I'm here with uh, <laughs> Doing Smart Business Moves with Al. Al, is your last name pronounced Levi or Levy? Or? Thank you for asking because I answer to everything. I grew up in a big family, but it's it's Levy. It's spelled Levy. L-E-V-I, but it's okay. like with an E at the end. Okay, gotcha. Levy. All right. Yeah. And I feel like I have seen you somewhere else before, Al. Um, were you on another recently on a podcast or something that I might have I, seen? I am on a ton of podcasts. Uh, ah. Tommy Mello's Home Service Expert. I've been on, you know, a ton of marketing uh, things. I so, saw you on yeah, they, yeah, if you just Google Al Levy, you're going to get uh, sickeningly surprised at how many places I go. I never sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, actually, I actually, I have a lot of them on my website. Um, so if you just go to my website, the number seven powercontractor.com, go okay. over to the podcast, you'll see hold on, uh, hold on. guest the appearances. And you'll also, yeah. So you'll hear, um, you'll hear me too. Is it all words? The number seven? The number, no, it's the let, it's the number seven. Okay. Power, P O W E R, contractor, C O N T. R A C T O R dot com. Alet, sorry, Alet. It's the website is seven, the number seven, powercontractor.com. I was giving right. you my email address. Oh, it's popping up here too. We're going to have to show that in a second. Okay. All right. So sevenpowercontractor.com. Here we are. And let me grab this and share it for That's everybody. my book. All right. Can you see it? Am I already sharing? I. I see myself. I don't know if everybody, but yeah, it's the seven power contractor. It's actually available on Audible because uh, so many people are in the trucks. That's, that's pretty helpful to have. I, yeah, I don't think other people could see it, but I'm going to first, I'm going to post right here. So okay. y'all, anybody, if you're on already, go ahead and hit sevenpowercontractor.com. You can go and look at um, who Al is, a little bit about what he does, and also look at his book. I'm excited. So uh normally we have a little bit of chatting but i was telling you that tom's the funny one and he's not here today because he's out having a good old time having fun doing something and i don't you know i could tell dad jokes but i'm really uh not the best at telling jokes so i'm gonna just pass and i want to make sure i stay on the blue so let me let me address why would the audience want to hear from al right. <laughs> the seven power contractor who, who am i and why they, why would you care because if I were you, I would want to know why I should care. And so I was the third generation in my family's business. We were in Long Island, New York. And if you know where JFK Airport, just drive towards the water. And that's where we were. Okay. And so our business was started in 1936 out of my grandfather's gas station. My brothers and I showed up. And now it's on to my middle brother, who's still there, but his son. So fourth generation. And what that really takes is systems and yeah. repeatable systems. So that's really what we speak about in the seven power contractors, their ability to put these foundational blocks under any company. So you're going, well, I'm not a plumbing, heating, cooling, but well, that's okay. I've worked with kitchen cabinetry, garage door, roofing guys. I was telling the story to Liz before we came on is I actually worked with a commercial photographer in the uh, California because her technicians were the photographers of hers and the dispatcher was the person who assigned the school. So it's more alike than it's unalike. We always think our business is different. And oh, yeah. people in the maid service business have already found me out there in the world and checked into it as to, you know, because they also know that you, to repeat your business, you really need systems for planning, operations, staffing, sales, sales coaching, marketing, and finance. I don't care what work you do. You need those those seven? Really Was that it? Real quick, you did the seven? Seven. All right. You know what? I'm super excited about this for one really, really big, huge reason. People constantly say this. I need to have better systems in my business. And then I'll ask them, well, what systems do you need? They're like, I don't know. Like, how do I know what systems I need? So it sounds like you're going to be answering that question for us today. I will. I will. And, it, and that really does kind of lean into this. Um, you know, my company functioned from 1936 to 19... 96, 60 years without systems. And we made a lot of money, but here's what I can promise you. It was chaotic yeah. and incredibly stressful. And so what does that mean? I'll put some context to it. I was making a lot of money as a young man. Mm -hmm. 
but I was 50 pounds heavier than you see me today. Oh, wow. And I can tell you that I was eating my stress, which is not unusual for owners. We yeah. find our addiction, if you will, to cope with what goes on in the stress. So my tagline for the last 20 years when I left my business to do this has always been less stress, more success, because I was very successful. I wanted less stress. I wanted my life back. Yeah. My business supposedly was created to serve my life. It was anything but that. My life was serving my business. And that's very common for, I'm sure, everyone that's listening here. To the very same. common. For entrepreneurs in general, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. We get, we get on that, that hamster wheel and just start going, going, going. And we don't really see a way to slow down or get off or do things differently. We're just so busy going. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, have a, I have a quick answer to how to handle that. So hang on, I'm going to give it to you. One is learn how to master how to clone yourself. Okay. Because I never could. <laughs> so you're not going to be able to either. Right. There are no clones coming. That's right. number one. Number two is you could work all day long. I mean, really, do you have to sleep? I mean, that's just for lazy people. You should just stay awake 24 hours a day. And just grind yourself to nothingness. By the way, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. There's a little New York sarcasm, even though I live in Arizona for the last 20 years. You can't do it. There's only two types of companies, Liz, that I've ever worked with in the 20 years out. Either it's, you know, really hardworking, small business people. They, are, they get a great following. People love them. They like the work that they can do because they can keep their eye on it or the thumb on the pulse of what's going on. Yeah. But then the company goes and grows and they can't, again, like I said, clone themselves and things become a problem and they run out of, you know, hours in a day, days in a week, weeks in a month, uh, and they can't clone themselves. And trust me, I had that conversation with my brother in an office late at night where, you know, he was going, why don't they do this? And why don't they do this? And I go, if they could do all that, why would they be working here? I said, what you want, Richie, is a clone and they're not coming. So yeah. you get what you get. That's really kind of one of the big stepping stones. The second ones I've worked with are great marketers and they have tons of calls and they've grown their business. But every time the phone rings, Liz, it's like gasoline to a fire because they can't answer the phones right. They can't dispatch right. They can't get the people trained to go to the homes or businesses and do the stuff the same way each and every time. So imagine I travel to this great country and actually Canada as well. And here's what I can tell you, Liz. Most places you will find in my left hand when I was doing one-to-one -one consulting, yeah. a couple of Starbucks. Okay. Now, I don't think Starbucks is the best coffee you can get. <laughs> I but here's what I know. Here's what I know. It tastes the same in Appleton, Wisconsin, as it does in Long Beach, California, as it does in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. True. So we as customers prize consistency. So ask yourself a tough question. Without documented systems for planning, for operations, for staffing, for sales, for sales coaching, for marketing and finance, those seven things, how can you be a replicable business? You're going to be always hoping that magic walks in the door. And what do I call magic? Or I used to call it lightning in a bottle or unicorn, whichever phrase you like, yeah. is the magic person who walks through the door that's already trained, has all these skills, and they have a great personality, and they're ready to do whatever you ask, try doing that over and over again. I will tell you, you're going to have a very hard time. If your customer, your company is based on people versus systems, that's your challenge. Yeah, agreed. You know, uh, you bring up a really good point that is hard for a lot of people, too, in this, I think, in our industry, because a lot of times the person that's starting the business, they start really, really small. And how they start is by hiring one person and that either works out or doesn't work out initially. And if they don't work out, fine, they leave. But initially they find that first person that they really like. And they sort of build their business around them and this other person and this friend idea. <laughs> now I've got a friend, right? And so... Yes. And now they really like this person who's a friend and does everything and really is very supportive because it's it's a relational relation, right? That's what it is. It's a relationship that they're having. It's not so much building a business as building relationships. And so they bring in a few more people 
and they're building some more relationships. But at some point in time, systems have to replace the relationships because you can only build relationships until you have so many. And then your friends are like, you never spend any time with me. Or you want to spend all your friend time with so and so. <laughs> yeah, no, there's only one of you, and it's you know, and they also remember the old days when it was just you and me. Oh remember God. we used to do that, and they want to go back and talk about the good old days. Yes. The, the reality is, and I will share with this, a good friend of mine helped me with this: is staffing is like a moving train. Mm -hmm. There are people that hop on. There are people that will hop off. There are people that you will kick off the train and then there's some that will ride all the way with you to the end because yeah. they've earned that. Yeah. But you'll never know. So you have to always be doing five steps that I talk about for staffing, which is always recruiting, always hiring, always orienting, always training. And here's the one everyone misses, Liz, including myself. Yeah. You think they're on the team, but they're not. Yeah. And that is always retaining. So you're always working those five steps. All right, steps. give them to me again. I'm going to write them down. Always recruiting. Recruiting, yep. Always hiring. Always hiring, absolutely. Always orienting. Orienting, awesome. Always training. Training, absolutely. And then the last one is always retaining. Mm, nice. Yeah, so that was, that was not us originally, Liz. Yeah. <laughs> My brother, who was the guy in the office, fortunately, he was didn't do any of the outside work, but he was the one that kept the office and it actually made sure our bills were paid and money yeah. was coming in. So we were lucky with three brothers. It worked out really well as we managed. We were not a small company. We were about 70 people, about 17 million in sales. So um, really, he, he nicknamed our hiring system. So let me let me tell you back, which is in the good old days, we would get lucky sometimes we would get two weeks notice that somebody's leaving uh -huh. and that's great sometimes we get one week's notice and that's still okay and sometimes they would leave the keys to their truck and we would ask to ask ourselves are they still here what happened because <laughs> happened? this is before the word ghosting we didn't know what ghosting was but we yeah. were getting ghosted so at this point um we'd run an ad and we'd be desperate and anybody who could walk in my brother marty at a good new york you know, sarcasm to him. He, he nicknamed our hiring process and recruiting process as the mirror test, M-I-R-R-O-R, -R -R, yeah. which meant if you breathe in the mirror, you're hired because we were desperate. We were so, so reactive. We were never proactive, but finally we banged our heads enough that we changed it. So that's where those five steps of staffing come in. Is yeah. If I could get two good people walking through the door and if I'm always recruiting, you mean to tell me you wouldn't find a position for them? Here's what I can tell you is that like us, there were two knuckleheads that we would be dying to get rid of, but we wouldn't pull the trigger and hold them to our standards yeah. because there was nobody behind them. But once we got proactive, which means putting money to work, systems to work for these systems to work in staffing, yeah. we began to have this faith that we could get new people in. So we began to hold people to standards, help them move up the ladder with us, up the corporate ladder in the boxes that are represented on the org chart. Yeah. This really made our staffing train work in a phenomenal direction. So basically you just had a, a funnel for hiring the same way you had a funnel for sales. And so people kept coming in so you didn't have to hold on to those people. All right. So you've got to... I've got a I've got a, a question for you here, Al, since we're talking about this right now. Yep. Uh, this is something that we're talking about with somebody just today. Uh, here's the situation. He is a great business owner. He is very uh, committed to his company. It's a strong, growing company. He's committed to his systems. He's also a very loyal employer. And he's very committed to his people if they do good work for him. He has an employee that is so amazing when she's amazing that he can't hardly stand it. He's like, I just bow down to her. It's so amazing. So much better than him. Right? That's just thing. That's, that's good of him to recognize. How you know, awesome. Most of us have, yeah, that's very rare because yes. most of us as owners think who's best for this job. And it's always our hand goes up. Oh, no, he, I'm telling you, he's a yeah. good, 
strong owner, right? That is a good one. The problem one. is the other 50% of the time, no, she falls off the rails. Oh, okay. So it's a balancing act. Got it. And, and he struggles because he can't get rid of her because she's so amazing when she's on. Uh, and when she's off, she's not that bad. She's just not great. Not uh, you know, the problem with this whole scenario yeah. is that even if she was great all the time, mm -hmm. God forbid she walks across the street and misses the bus coming. Bad for her, but bad for you because you're a hostage at your own company and you didn't realize it. Mm. You're both at risk. And so what happens if she gets sick? What happens if she decides to move? Whoever that person that you think is so magical. Yeah. I actually had a franchise, a drain franchise nationwide. What kind? And they would they would come to um what to kind our, of franchise? I'm sorry? What kind of franchise? It was a drain. So the when you flush your toilet and the water disappears, okay. well sometimes when it doesn't, that's when you need us. So it was <laughs> okay. a drain and it was also the commercial. And it was it's coast to coast. And it actually takes all these systems that I had put together for years. And I partnered up with a, one of my clients, as a matter of fact, who wanted to do this franchise. And along with my, my, as my wife calls it, my work wife, Ellen Rohr, who's very famous in our industry, okay. uh, the financial person, the rest of it, we, we mastered this thing. But the whole idea of the systems, so they would come to our office and they would see a great CSR, customer service rep, or a great dispatcher, or a great tech, or a great service manager. And they go, oh, if I only had that person. And I go, I have built hundreds of that person all across the country. Yeah. I find willing people with no skills and have the ability to make them willing people that have great skills at the boxes they hold on the org chart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, so, so let's talk about this then real quick. You always hear from people, Al, is that you got to hire the right people. <laughs> and so my thinking there is the right people are the people that are willing and committed, right? They I are and growth growth oriented they want to grow they want to do better so that's this guy's problem she's yes, it really, is. the reason why he struggles with her is she's like you know i've been dropping the ball i'm gonna get this fixed i'm gonna get on it it's me it's not you i you know how much i love this company so i need you to just give me a little bit of time to get this fixed <laughs> sorry for laughing but you know i've heard this story a thousand times of course and so it's 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 really it's kind of like listen no matter how old we are we still act like kids yeah so it's kind of like going to your mom and dad i know i let you down but you can count on i'm going to pick up the ball and i'm going to be great and you will be for an hour and, you know yeah. until something else happens next so yeah that's really the problem here but it's still a case of really you need to know the boxes it takes to run your company and then even if you don't have a person for every box, let's face it, you need to cover those boxes. Counts okay. payable, counts payable. Um, actually, if it's maids that go out, that's like what I call technicians, the service manager, dispatcher working together, who goes out to does what, who sells yeah. the jobs, uh, a big ticket salesperson or whatever it is that goes and sells it, who answers the phone. There's all these boxes that you have to have. Yeah. And the question is- Boxes on the org chart, basically. Yeah. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah, and then the goal is to have a, a manual for each of the boxes on the org chart that cover 80% of what goes on in that in that box. Because even if I'm willing and I come to you and I want to take one of those boxes from you or make you go down the depth chart, D-E-P-T-H, yeah. which means first string, second string, third string, so that yeah. you don't have to be the first person to pay the bills. You're the third person to pay yeah. the bills. I can't, I can't even give that box away if I haven't created the systems it takes to hold the box. Yes. That's so, the big like you said about 80% though. Talk to us about 80%, that. 80%, yeah. Owners, the reason that they've reached this level of, you know, owning their own company in general, the reason is because most of us are perfectionists. And again, we're good at what we do. And so are we the best to answer the phones? Probably. Are we the best dispatcher? Probably. Are we the best bait service? Probably. Let's, you know, <laughs> name it, you know. But you can't clone yourself, as we said already. So the problem becomes you're going to make a perfect set of systems that if you printed them, which nobody prints it anymore, would be as high as the ceiling. 
and then you'll still put another page in there. And the reality is that no one can possibly know that. So even though you can search it, that's not how manuals should work. The thing that manuals should do is it's what do I need to know for what goes on at this company 80% of the time? And I'm going to leave the 20% weird to the side. Because if the 20% weird that's not covered in the manual comes up, then I go see to whoever I report to about how to handle this. Okay. The, problem, the problem is, Liz, people cannot handle 80% of what goes on in the boxes that they're in. And by the way, you're already in these boxes. Those of you who are listening, because yeah. you think, well, I'm small, tough luck. You already have those boxes. Yeah. You just didn't know it. Yeah. You're in a lot of them. That's the, oh, that's yeah. the thing, right? You're in yeah. tons And of you're going to be in them forever until you learn how to hand them off successfully. So right. it's not like taking a rubber ball and throwing it against the wall and watch it come flying back at you. So is that what you're going to teach us, how to hand them off successfully? Yes. So the big thing that I would say is this really speaks to the operating, operating power, which is one of those things. So basically... That's having the right box or chart that fits your organization. Now I have one for contractors that goes from a million to 200 million in sales. It's the same set of boxes. Nice. Maybe they get to add a couple of more boxes, but it's the same structure and reporting order. Okay. And then, so you think of that as the bingo board and then your job is to cover with each box with a manual that covers that 80% that I'm speaking to. And if you just want to see it, even though it's not set up for your company, yeah. If they go to sevenpowercontractor.com and then hit the products page, you'll see where it says signature operating manual system. Right. Or if you just want a shortcut to that, it's sevenpowercontractor.com. Signature, so, the operation, operating manuals or the staff? Yeah, okay. the operating manuals. That's where the box work chart oh, kicks in. I don't think I'm sharing my screen. Let me share my screen so people can see this. Or maybe I am sharing. I'm seeing you, so I'm not seeing what they see. Um, 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 I know. I tell you what, I would send the link to them if you yeah, want. Yeah, I'm pulling it up right now, and I'm just going to put it in the chat, and they can yeah. go, they can go look at it. That's where they should go look at it. But really, these are the boxes. And having worked with a condo builder, and I never built a condo. I was never a commercial photographer. It's really the same set of boxes. Now, some of those may not apply if you're people going to do uh, maid service are not selling stuff to people. So they're yeah. not really on the service wing. Service, yeah. They're probably more on the install wing, which is the big tickets person sold something and now they're coming to fulfill it, which is providing the daily, weekly, monthly service that needs to be done. So there's a reporting order that still follows. And with these boxes, then if you look down the page, you'll see that there's video tours of the manuals that cover these boxes. Because that's really the goal. So if if you don't want to be doing a accounts receivable, accounts payable forever and be the only one, because if you're on vacation, that means people still have to get paid. So yeah, people have no sense of humor about not getting paid. Anyway, I digress. Yeah. So the the idea is that you have a manual that allows you to train someone up associated other training that you do with it. Okay. So that they can come and help take that box and move you down the depth chart is your goal. Awesome. Perception. So you're basically trying to um, get out of each individual box as quickly and as efficiently and effectively as you can so that you can now move on to the next box and have, yeah. right? Yeah. Your All job right. is to move you as an owner is to spend more time in the top levels working on your business, uh, your, your, what is the top line sales you want? What is the gross profit you desire? How are you going to, how many calls do you need? How many sales opportunities? What do you need? You know, and this is where the numbers are really the most important thing is understanding budgeting, which is really kind of what financial power talks about is you got to charge the right price. And then you have to be really great at marketing and sales for people to pay you. <laughs> That's really the, the essence of it. So it's not like one system is more than the other, but this is a good il illustration of what operating power really is. It starts with the right org charts and there is, that's the box org chart. The depth charges chart is a save as to that. And that's where you start putting the names in. Who's first string, second string, third string. Mm -hmm. So like I would, I was terrible at doing payroll. Mm -hmm. So mine was like about 25th name that they would pick. <laughs> 
but I did know how to do it if I was stuck. <laughs> yeah, there are some things in my company that I just don't know how to do at all. And I, I recognize that I should probably at least have a working idea about how some of these things work. Yes. Um, and I, I will tell you on that org chart, the two boxes that an owner can never leave, I don't care how big your company ever gets, is marketing manager and financial manager. Here's the reason. Financial manager, it is your money. No one, no one's ever going to care as much as you do. Plus, you cannot have the wool pulled over your eyes and find out too late, which is the sad story is, well, I'm not good at numbers and I don't really know, so I'm just going to give it to somebody. And that's where the problem comes home. It doesn't mean that you have to be, but you do need to know that you're asking the right questions. And really what it comes down to, based on people handing the numbers up to you, are they right? And can you trust them? And are they delivered on time? Those are the three things that you want as a financial manager. And a marketing manager is, think of a bathtub full of the right amount of calls from the right customer at the right time. That's the three rights of marketing. Okay, what? This is a weird sounding bathtub. What, what do you got in well, your bathtub? Here, there, I come from a plumbing background. Okay. So, so this bathtub full of calls okay. is filled with the right amount of calls from the right customer at the right time, the three rights of marketing. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Your job is to overfill that bathtub because if you have way more calls than you can humanly do in a day, guess what? You get to set the price. You get to set who you will and won't work for and the type of work you do. Plus, it allows you to have the upward momentum to put more people out there working, in your case, more maids, going to more places, more salespeople selling more jobs. That's how this company goes bottom up. All right. So basically, you're saying that the two thing, not basically, you said clearly said two, two areas you can't get rid of, financial and marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, because nobody's going to manage your finances like you, and there's too much risk, right? Yeah. Of, yeah. of somebody doing something else nefarious. Yeah. And then with marketing, you just can't really afford to put that in somebody else's hands because they won't push as hard as you. So, what do you do if, oh, you can't see us live? Oh, sorry, germ wizards. Uh, but you're on live right now. A lot of people watch us. Um, <laughs> later so it looks like german was is not live yay so what do you do al if you are simply not good at marketing what do you do? yeah so here's the thing about I, I don't want you to sit there and think you're going to do the new ad campaign or, or make up the yeah. direct mail postcards or you're going to make the billboards your job is to know as a marketing manager again how many are the right amount of call right customer what do i need okay. to keep all these people busy today and also to build my company as I move forward, because I need to know how many calls do they need? How many opportunities do they need to close? How many opportunities do they need to run right? And then how can I put more people so this company goes and grows the right way? And the only two things that I ever am interested in is top line sales and gross profit. Until I have both of those, I'm not really much interested in anything else you want to share with me. So the marketing though is most times owners would not have grown if there wasn't great demand for what they want to do. Your job is to, you can have outside vendors and I encourage that, but they will never know your unique selling position, that your target audience. All of that is in your head. Yeah. And until you have that documented in the marketing manager position, no one can really do a great marketing campaign for you because they won't have your authentic voice. They don't understand your business like you do. I'm not advocating, you can have outsources for all of that. You can have people inside that do it. Okay. Nowadays, you know, people sense. are doing this as well, yeah. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. So you're not the one doing it, but you are the one that's making sure that it is happening by people that know what they're doing. So that's yeah. your job. And that's all about objectives too, which is marketing is thought as this great artwork versus science work. And the reality is there's a size there is a scientific way. If you keep plugging your numbers back and you're really great at tracking ROIs and you're tracking cost for call to get lead acquisition, you keep plugging this back, you get better and better at knowing that. Now, software today is really good at lead source tracking, 
where did the call come from? And then making sure you track this stuff. But you do need to make sure that's really what the marketing person's job is, the marketing manager. Because you want to go to a marketing, if you're going to do it in-house or even if you go out to vendors, you go, we, we want you to handle the marketing. Well, what does that mean? I need a thousand calls from this type of customers. There's two or three of them. Here's when I need them by. And this is how I'm judging your performance. Awesome. So basically they have their own set of KPIs. That yes. They're following. yes. That's a great way to say it. Yeah. Great. And that's just how we're tracking your um, effectiveness is are you meeting uh, the KPIs that we need you yep. to meet? Yeah, and that's, that's a good discussion with them. Yeah, you know, it's, for instance, just as a half sideway note is, a lot of guys will run uh, TV campaigns or, you know, uh, radio campaigns, and you have to have a three frequency, which just means that your ideal audience would hear you three times or see you oh, three okay. times in a week. Okay. So um, people who run this campaign, and they spend a lot of money, and they go, it's not working, it's not working. Well, yeah, because it's two months. <laughs> In two months, I haven't got enough penetration. It, yeah. It's eight months to a year before you even know if it's working or not. Now, a good marketing company would tell you that, but you have to ask the right questions and you have to have objective benchmarks, KPIs, or then it's just a lot of money going out to, I mean, you can waste tons of money on pay-per-click. Now, I think pay-per-click is great. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, Google reviews is important. I think LSAs are important, you know. There's just only there's only about a billion ways to go to market, right? right. So there's no way I could. You can't even push your your shopping cart in your supermarket where you don't see my something in front of you, right? Yeah, you're, you're we're bombarded. So how do you break our heads open that we finally see you and know you're the choice if I'm looking for a maid service? I see there's some question on the screen here. It's right here. We just landed in eighty thousand square feet. It's not a question. It's just a comment. Oh well, congratulations oh, then. Yeah. Yay. Good job. Uh, always looking for new clients every day. I'm with you. Here yes, here. That's proactive marketing and sales. Congratulations to you. Absolutely. Right. More, yep. more, more customers all the time. Turn them into a raving fan, get pictures, videos, testimonials, and deploy them anywhere and everywhere you can work out a referral marketing deal. There's a lot of ways to play that. So you, it sounds like you actually enjoy marketing. Al, I love right? marketing. So here's the story because we stepped into it, Liz. Yeah. Thank you for noticing. I was great at marketing and sales. Okay. And the problem was my team was great at blowing up every opportunity I had. <laughs> so that's why I had to pull back. That's why I had to become great at, you know, planning and, and uh, org charts and manuals and the associated training centers where I could make them do the work right in front of me here. Okay. rather than in customers' homes and businesses, because that's a very bad place to be. We used to call that OTJT because we didn't want to say it out loud. What that is short for is on-the-job training. <laughs> so that means I'm coming to your home today to learn how to do my job, and yeah. you're paying me. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Pay me more. Pay me, Pay more. me more. It should be done in-house. And when you can, when you can, then you make that great looking training center, your sales and marketing focus because it separates you from all of your competition. It's why you're worth more money. It's why your system's better. It's why you're the Starbucks anywhere you go or better. All right. Okay. So definitely I know that there are a lot of people that are in for that idea. Uh, Tom has had, he has a 10,000 square foot building and he has had an in-house training he has like a bedroom and a, a oh, that's great, perfect room, and, perfect. and he's got a set of stairs in there, and different kinds of blinds and different flooring, and he's got all the things in there. And that's, that's well, exactly what I'm speaking to. That's yeah, exactly what I'm speaking that. to. And believe it or not, we do the same thing with plumbing, heating, cooling, electric, all the trades. We do the same thing. We don't just put stuff in there. We make it look like a house yeah. and simulate running calls. So they know their responsibilities from the time they get to the door to the time they leave. And in our case, our guys are, are telling them what we're doing. They're great communicators. Their, their sales system is all built into that training. So the three things is sales, operation, technical. Now, sales is really great communication. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're just going there to do this, the maid service, you still have to talk to the customer. If they're home. If they're home. And if they're not home, 
then you've got to send them photos or something. Well, text send them no. photos yeah. or text or something to know that their house is clean and this is the way we left it when we get yeah. done. All right. So, so sales. What's so you said sales ops and tech. Yes. Yeah, so for, for the technicians, sales operation technical. So operational is they're clean and neat. Their vehicles are clean and neat. They get to the door and they protect everything in the home. So that stays clean and neat. And then whatever they need to do to close the call with the office the right way is what I call operational. Technical is there's a method for cleaning the mirror, right? Where it doesn't look all stained afterwards and streaky. Yeah. There's that's the technical because we don't want to get a call tomorrow that my bedroom mirror looks worse than you when you arrived. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't want to get that call. No, I, I would love to tell you I've never gotten that call, but I don't like it when I do get it. Just saying. so you thought I didn't know. This stuff. <laughs> you were there. <laughs> I'm there. I've been there. It's it's a it's frighteningly more alike than dislike. Yeah, of course, and and service businesses there are some. Um, some hurdles you're going to have to get over and we all deal with it's, there isn't, there isn't such a thing as 100% satisfaction with, uh, well, that, I mean, they might be satisfied, but they're not going to be a hundred percent thrilled. You might be able to get them there. Yeah. Not, not everybody's going to start there. You know, and that's, that's really built into the communication system. Mm -hmm. So what we always talked about, diagnose the customer before you diagnose the job. Oh, nice. I like that. Because ultimately, you know, yes, they're going to measure what they measure. They're going to see what they're going to see, but you need to keep them in the loop. So even if they're not there, like I work in in a great place in Vale, and these castles on the hill is one of their 10 houses they own. So yeah. they're not there, but we need to make them be there. So we set it up where... We let them know we need a number we can reach because we're going to look over the job and then we have to bring them in either FaceTime or Zoom so they know what it is that we're doing and what we're recommending. Because mm -hmm. when you're doing sale where you're not there, that's a problem. When you do the work and they're not there, that's a problem. Because ultimately today, you know, the stakes have changed from when I was doing this. It used to be the rule of thumb was if you like what I did, you'll tell 10 friends. Our main friends, and yeah. It, yeah. And if you hate what I do, you'll tell 100 people. Well, now today I just go on the internet and I tell seven people about how much I hate your guts after you finish doing the work. So the stakes are high. So in many cases with customers that I've worked with over a period of time, we get to 100% uh, customer satisfaction or your money back. Now that sounds pretty radical, so I will share more. First of all, they're really great at tracking their callback ratio, which means they went on so many jobs and so many came back for legitimate callbacks. Yeah. The mirror was messed up or I broke the the, the vase or whatever that is, right? Stuff so out. that counts as, counts as a callback. So there's a ratio we're looking for. And once that becomes known, that can actually be put into your budget to account for these things. Mm -hmm. So proactively, you know what you need to have in your budget. Yeah. Plus, if you have the boxes and the org charts and the manuals and then the training center and you get them trained up, the likelihood you're going to need, it goes down and down and down. And the better you sell it right, the better things go right. Yeah. So we do what we call go quiet before you go loud. And go quiet means is we offer 100%, they go to the door and the texts are told that we offer 100% customer satisfaction or your money back. And they say that if they're having a price objection. Uh -huh. to see if it overcomes because it does and then when it works really well they start putting it on their website they start putting it out in every marketing thing because they know there's nobody else offering this right yeah i uh i, I have always really liked that we had a 200 we have a 200 percent guarantee satisfaction guarantee if you're not Ooh. happy we will donate 100 percent. we'll give you your money back and we'll donate the same amount to the charity of your choice i love that i think that I just been story topped. Nice <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Uh, that is a great, it's a great thing. Now you don't want to be using that too often. So no. when would you use it too often? They're not trained in your home. I mean, your house, your yeah. training center. They don't have systems and procedures that they're tested on. The person who's selling it is not selling it right. So there's a lot of these things you want to fix. This is just, you know, yeah. A catch all, if you will, and we don't want to be doing it too often, but it is a big sales and marketing advantage. Yeah, definitely. And you definitely have to have systems back to oh, yeah. our thing 
to be able to manage everything, including people that are not thrilled. So not everyone's going to be thrilled right off the bat, but we got to get them to that place. We just don't want them to be miserable. Right? Yes. And, and, you know, ultimately what I would, what I taught in the sales system uh, is Liz, I appreciate the opportunity to come to your home today, you know, provide a price quote in the service. I just want you to know the way I work is that I'm, my design is to make you a raving fan of ours because I'm going to be looking for a great review and then I'm going to want to take a picture and testimonial because it's good for me. So that's the level that I'm going to be working at. Nice. And if at the end of this, when I'm done, I'm going to bring you in to look at it because I don't want you just to be okay. I want you to be thrilled. Yeah, I love that. It, you, yeah. you sound we like taught the salespeople to say that. We taught the techs to say that. That's awesome. I love that. I need to teach everybody how to say that. That's amazing. Yeah. And you do want to practice. That's another thing you practice in your home at your yeah. shop where you do this, taking it back. So there's a question I see. Yeah. What do you guys, uh, what do you guys think about, about virtual assistant? I'm thinking about hiring one for our office to help with phone calls and office duties. Yeah. So I don't know the size of the company. So I have to be careful here as a rule of thumb. Um, if you have systems, and since they're outsources or virtual assistants, you can't make the systems as big as somebody who you see every day face to face and you're doing this work and there's a much better handoff. So if you're using someone outside now in this business, seven power contractor, which I've been doing for 20 years, I am the employee. I came from a company of 70. I'm it. So yeah. of course, I've been using outsources all around the country, but they know there are systems because I do as I preach for each of them so that they know their KPIs, they know what they need to hit, they know when they need to deliver. And when they go to do something, I go, if we're ever gonna do this in the 80% category, I wanna see a, a short written thing at the end of what we do. So if somebody buys my program, sorry? Give me an example. If you so if, if somebody, if somebody buys my program, the online program, and they're having a problem logging in, I have a document that I can go right in and go lost the password, here's how you reset it and send it right to them. But I'm not the only one because I talk about the depth. Right. I have three other people that are trained. So one of us is going to fix this problem and fix it the same way. Yeah, and hopefully you're not called in until it's failed three times with three other people, right? Okay. Yeah. we. You got to be faster and more responsive. People are less and less tolerant these days. Oh, my gosh. So true. So true. But we're look, we're, we're all like this. You know, years I ago, before, you know, pages and phones and the rest of it, when I was in New York, we were the one of the only, you know, New York never sleeps. Well, now it's pretty much, I don't care where you go. There's a yeah. gas station convenience store that's open 24 hours a day. Yeah. I can go to FedEx and get a package across the country. And any time of night, I feel like waking up. The yeah. stakes are much higher. And we as consumers, when we stop being owners, we expect the same thing. So yeah. that's the new level of the game. It's true. We do. And we complain about it with other people, but we are exactly the same way. We are exactly the same. Yeah. And there's and, a little thing that you may never have heard of. There's a thing called Amazon. <laughs> so you can wake up anytime you want. <laughs> I'm not that far from a giant center here. And it's like I order some batteries and it's here like in an hour. I mean, I didn't need the batteries that bad, but thank wow. you. <laughs> wow. Okay. So my daughter also lives by. You bring that up, so good of a point. She also lives by an Amazon uh, distribution center. So she is used to getting her stuff max, two days, maximum. Yes. Never gotten anything in, in more than two days. Well, she comes and stays here for a week, a year, and at least one week a year. And last time she was here, she was like, oh, mama, there's this amazing game. I definitely want to show you. I was like, okay, awesome. Bring it with you. She's like, no, nah, I'll just order it when I'm there. It's cheap. I <laughs> want to keep it. I was like, you won't get it. We won't get it before you're here. She's like, what are you talking about? Oh, I'll, I'll get it. Don't worry. I know how to order stuff. I'm like, um, so yeah, she came. Day one, I'm like, you better order that game. I got it the day she left. <laughs> so she's like, what is wrong with this city? I was like, it's little. <laughs> yes. yes. You know, I'm, like all things, they prioritize what they yeah. prioritize. And not all things are the same, which is no. a little different. No, absolutely yeah. not. Okay. Yeah. So, Al, I really want to dig in to the seven powers, right? I yeah. want you to. So, I've got them written down POSS, SCFMF. 
but I'd love you to like give us just whatever you can. I don't. Let me give you a high level thing. So planning power is to all of you listening. Do you need another idea, or do you need another idea implemented? And you know it's the second one, right? Of course. But but we can't go to Google. We can't be in a Facebook group, that industry Facebook group. We can't go to a lecture, a seminar, uh, you know, an online program where another great idea comes along. Yeah. So where do they go? Because everything can't be the number one priority. You just drive yourself and your staff crazy. Yeah. So what we learned to do is we created a hopper, which means at the top, or think of a funnel, top of the funnel. Every great idea goes there at the top yeah. of the funnel. Every great idea you either have to make a company uh, better, whatever way that you define it, that's where it goes first. Okay. So that's what I call the master project list. Okay. And then it boils down with two giant, think of strainers in your hand. The first strainer is it either solves the biggest problem or challenge, okay. or the second one is it helps you grow and be more profitable. So here's an example. Okay. You have 10 maids going to 10 different locations an hour apart. Do they arrive at the job, know what to say, and then go to the work and we'll work in a systematic way that they don't miss anything. Okay. And if the answer is no, well, guess what you have to do? Yes. So we have to create the system. We have to create the training that goes with that because that will fix our biggest problem or challenge. Now, growth and profitability is if we got more of the right customers from the right, you know, the right amount of customers, the right calls at the right time. Then we, yeah. Then we could, get more profit, grow bigger, you know, raise our prices, do the things we want to do because we can be more selective. So that's what gets you down to your top 30. That's midway down the, the strain. Okay. No one, I don't care how big you are. I don't care how much money you have. You cannot work on 30 things at a time effectively. You will just drive everyone crazy. Right. So what do you need to do? Use the same filters again filter strainer that gets you down to the biggest problem or challenge or greatest chance and grow be profitable and you get down to your top five five and so then, wait three from is three from one two from the other master project top okay. 30 yeah down to your top five and that's where we end okay so the top five is what are the five projects and habits not everything's a project so, for instance, do you have steps of corrective action? Like that woman that you were describing, the person you were describing who's good and bad. Yeah. They are a candidate for formal steps of corrective action. Mm -hmm. That is a habit that has to come in. Delegating. How do you delegate? You're passing down the hallway and go, hey, take care of making those, make sure those flyers go out. Huh? That's not going to be effective. Yeah. Well, I need you to straighten up the warehouse outside so all the cleaning supplies are right. Have you been disappointed at that? I'm betting you have. <laughs> I was. So I had to learn how to formally do the steps of delegation. And there's a set of steps that have to go. So that's what I call habits. And the okay. other thing is maybe you have to change the vehicles that they're in so because the, they can't carry what they need for 80% of the homes they get to 80% of the time. Or they're not set up to be, I can drop, I can be in car 99. And I can move to car 100 if there's a problem in 99 because they're set up exactly the same. Yeah. Car or truck, whatever they're using. Yeah. And so standardizing your business, which is systems, is what makes that much more doable and allows you to, you know, go and grow. And so those are the, that's the typical thing. Now, here's the trick. You don't get to just stick it in your computer and we'll say it's a good idea. Right. <laughs> no. With my clients who pay me a lot of money, by the way. I made them take a big giant whiteboard, even these days, not in the computer. Yeah. Every Everybody goes every day. There's a whiteboard that says, what are the five things? Five. Yeah. And then a column that says why we're doing it. And the big one that ruins them for accountability is the status. Because if you never see anything changing, they know same as normal. Yeah. So that's why it's put up there. But that's not how you do the work. It's to hold you, the owner, accountable to your own staff that here's what we're working on, here's why we're working on it, here's where we are in getting this out into the world. Now, when you get the five moving, then you're able to go back to the 30 and find out what next earned its way to the five. And you need to commit every week, I don't care how crazy it is, I don't care if you're traveling, I don't care anything, that you have a block of time where you do nothing but work on the top five, which is working on your business. Okay. 
right? So top five, okay. and you got to have the time blocking. Yep. All right. So this is very similar to the stuff that we teach. Very, very similar. We don't want I, I'm sure it is, but, yeah. but that was not how we did things. We just did all well, the things right. So you didn't either. this is really designed to work on the right thing at the right time, the right way. Those are the three rights of planning. Nice. All right. So we got three different rights. We got three rights of marketing, three rights of planning. There's a theme here. Yes, three. Yeah, I'm it. All right. So the first P is the planning power. Correct. Right? Do we have time to go over another one? Uh, I don't know how much time we got left. We got 10 minutes. Okay. Well, then we're going to be quick. So operating power is that org chart and then the manuals to cover, which we already talked about it. Having yeah. repeatable systems for each of those boxes, which are manuals that are living documents. They're not just a bulleted job description, which what you guys have, which is pretty close to worthless. Better than nothing, but they're really about <laughs> worthless. So you're running your company systematically. You are the, you are the and, funny one, Al. <laughs> thank you. And then staffing. Staffing is really your ability to take willing people with no skills to willing, great, whatever they are on that org chart. And then providing a career path so that they can move up. Do they become a field supervisor? Do they run a crew? What do they do so that they have a career with us? Because that's what will stop. That's what makes the difference in retaining. And so the next thing is a sales process. So whoever goes and sells these jobs, it can't be just because of quote unquote, you know, Al's a great salesperson. Well, what happens again if Al gets hit by a bus? Nice. There has to be a sales system where they have the square footage. They they have the certain amount of how many beds there are, how many, you know, how the thing there's what type of floor surfaces they're they're creating yeah. and have those in uh, templates that they can tweak one of these, two of these, five of these, and the pricing comes out to the right place. And they figured in your profit, they figured in their own commission, and they figured in a, what I call a bonus or a spiff for the maids who are coming now to do the job right. So they turned it over to the, to the team that's coming. So they know what they're going to be running into with pictures or videos. And then they do an expert job and prove their pictures and videos that the job was done right. All right. So what I just heard you say is you're sending people out and they're taking picture. They're getting pictures of all of the uh, all the work that they're going to do. And yep. then when they're done, they're also um, gathering pictures of all of the work that they do. Yeah. So right. that's that's your here. So mm -hmm. it, if they're if they're not the person who sells the job, uh -huh. well, the maids don't go to the job and sell it. Correct. So the person who sold the job is the one that needs to, once it's sold, gets the pictures so that they can turn it over to this team so they know what they're encountering. And when they get done, they just sent us pictures that said they did. And with the great software and CRMs today, they just posted in there. So we have proof that we did what, this is what it was when I arrived. This is what it was when I left. So most of the sales in our industry are currently not done in person. They're done um, either online or by phone. Do you have you can you can you can absolutely do it that way, as long as you are not just sending a bid because how would they know what you wrote down? That compromises your sales and the price you can change charge. So if you set up a Zoom call with them to go through, I prepared the proposal. I'm going to run through the lines about what it is we do and what makes. How do we end up with a job that's going to make you a raving fan? Okay. All right. So uh, set up a Zoom, something like that. Basically, what you're talking about is just making sure that we're on the, our expectations are, are yes. set for both yes. sides. Right? Yep, exactly I've right. I've got mine, you've got yours, and we kind of know where we're, what we're, what we're doing here. It's, it's really about what we can do, and we try to do the minimum about what we can't do. Okay. Mm, say that again. Try to do so the it's minimum. really that call is very much about what we do and how is it different. And then when, for the few things that we don't do, if that's what they're looking for, we need to address the, those things as well. I gotcha. I gotcha. I thought I heard you say we try not to do it very much. Of no, I didn't say, say uh, that. Oh, I need to hear more about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I don't. Yeah. I did learn, you know, most people have a very, we may not get through all of our things there, but um, most people have, oh, I, I know what I can say here is, if you go to my website and you download the jumpstart guide, yeah. they will have the full out definition from my book about these seven powers. So instead of me blasting through it, they ah. can get that. So All if right. you go there and you see where it says jumpstart guide. No, not yet. Where would I, find, right. 
on the main page. Seven Power Contractor on the main page where I'm holding up a book. You'll see there's a red, so get the guide. Let me go back there. I'm not on that page right now. It's a cute picture of you, Al, by the way. Thanks. I'm looking at, not the one with your, with, oh, here it is. Get our free jumpstart guide. It's yes, that has all of this really explained in a much better way. And the book, Perfect. it's an easy read, by the way. It's about two to four hours. I wrote it with my editor and I said, we as business owners, especially in the contracting business, don't have a lot of time. So there's no fluff in here. I have way more information than this. Trust me. All right. Way more. I've written about 500 articles. So I just sent mine in. Okay. I just well, then, I'm excited. I don't know if you can blast it out, but that, send them there because that's, that's my gift to you guys today because you're going to need that. I don't yeah. care how you do it, but that's really the, it's the same foundation for these very small companies I talked about and these giant companies, believe it or not, the same, think of it as seven building blocks or the foundation for your great home, which is your company today and where you want to go. Yeah, I love that. And who doesn't want that? I mean, we're all trying to figure, I'm putting it in here right now, y'all. There it is for you. You can all get the jumpstart guide. All right. Uh, so I do think that um, this business, our industry especially, uh, because we are so fractured in our industry, you know, there just isn't a lot of legislation and uh, not a lot of licensing, et cetera. That, that, is, that is unfortunate. It's good and bad. One is that it's bad because anybody with a, a car can all of a sudden be a maid service. Yeah. Uh, so your bar of entry, but that just challenges you. I had same thing. I had in, in our industry, there were people who would have a white truck and work all day for a hundred bucks. Oh. And uh, you know, it's, yeah, that's always going to be. And if you can't explain to people in a way long before they call you in your website and your marketing about how you are, you know, the top of how you are different in the market. My whole life was, our business was considered a commodity. My job was to make us a niche. Make make you an image? A niche. Oh, a niche. Okay. Yeah. So we weren't just in this basket of commodity. If, if you're all going to be a commodity, then it's strictly a price game. And that's not a game you want to play. No, don't want to play that game at all. Uh, all right. Well, you know what? We have three minutes. Do you have a last little thing of what we should tell people? I mean, obviously, go to the website. Obviously. Yeah, go to the website. There's a lot of really good information. Yes, it's mine, but it's born out of what I learned along the way because I've got a lot of bumps and bruises from falling in a lot of holes that I'm betting you've already fallen into or yeah. you will soon fall into. Yes. Um, and that's natural. But when you climb out of a hole, you have to make it your mission not to fall back in the same hole. And I have watched so many people over the years fall back into the same hole. So this there's a lot of good information there. Do download that jumpstart guide. If you want, by the way, I offer it to anybody in, in the industry. They can uh, chat me on the where it says contact Al on the bottom right side of my page. Okay. If you just say that you heard this podcast and you want to do a free 30 minute call to send it off to me, I'll send you an email with a link about how to set that up. I'm happy to spend 30 minutes talking to you. It's, it's my industry give back. Frankly, it was designed because I know if it hadn't been for a lot of great mentors coming into my life, I would be an old man in a basement turning a wrench. And that's not a good thought. No, it, you know, and this isn't really hard. It, it's hard. It's a hard industry. It's a hard, hard job. It's hard to go it alone. So I'm, I'm putting this on here. Connect with Al. Three, 30 minutes. Yep. And all they need to do is just, you know, when they send it to me, I have their email address and I will uh, send them the steps to do that. I'm happy to do that. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Al. My Kevin, pleasure. Check info. All right. I, I What keeps happening to me is every time I go over there to get information, I keep getting sucked in by something like, oh, I want to see that. Oh, I want to read that. Yeah. If, uh, there's a lot of great information on my blogs. Now, some of that you'll say, oh, it doesn't apply to me. But trust me, there's enough subjects there that it's pretty close to the things that you encounter as an owner. Business is business and especially yes. service businesses, right? Yes, service business, exactly service. right. Yeah, service businesses. Yeah. Well, again, thank you so much, Al. It is three o'clock. I'm going to let you off the hook here. And uh, everybody, please go take advantage of these resources. Don't let yourself 
uh, suffer. It looks to me like <laughs> you don't have to. All right. Uh, thanks again. Talk to thanks. you soon. Bye-bye. Appreciate it.